In the last video, we finally got a first start in the Evo 10 that's been out of commission for over two years, but now we gotta work out all the little bugs that this thing has. What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. I just got back from Florida and ready to get back to work on the Evo 10. So there is quite a few bugs since our first start that we gotta get worked out, mostly all electrical issues, and there are a couple leaks. So uh, I think what I'm gonna do is just start from the back of the car and kind of work our way forward. So first thing I wanna get knocked out, if you guys remember in the last video, um, the taillights weren't really working. Only the outer part of the passenger side taillight was illuminating everything else was off. So we clearly have some wiring issues in there. So let's get those pulled out and see if we can get them working. So you can see this taillight does come on when we turn the car on, but that one doesn't, that one doesn't, and that one doesn't. So I'm just gonna go ahead and take these two screws out, pop this taillight out, and then we can just mess with the little connectors in there until it turns on. My guess is it's just in wrong. Just as I figured with that light, just had to flip the connector around and all is good. Now I gotta figure out the lights kinda in the trunk because those guys aren't turning on. I'm not really sure why because everything can only plug in one way. So let's uh, diagnose that and uh, then we'll be done with the rear. All right, so on the chopping block for dinner tonight, we have my tail light. <laughs> so here's the deal, I figured it out. Um, this is obviously the outer tail light on the driver side. And this wire here is the main power that comes in from the car. The OEM bulb, essentially, the connector would connect here and it feeds power to this. And obviously this light is getting power. However, this is the output. So this is going to the two inner tail lights, which aren't getting power when the, the headlights are turned on. However, when I step on the brakes, the brake lights come on on the inner lights. So I knew it was something with our connection here and I, uh, I think I got it. So this green wire, I'm assuming it's some sort of either signal or just a, a power for those headlights. And if we go ahead and give this thing a little yank, we realize it's not hooked up to anything in there. So what we gotta do is take these four screws out that go around the headlight, slap this guy in the oven to warm up the glue, and uh, hopefully we can pull this apart and either reconnect this or resolder it, whatever we gotta do to uh, get it working again. All right, update. I uh, I heated this thing up and I could not get the lens separated. I don't know what glue VLAN uses, but they definitely don't want you opening it up again. Um, I actually put it back in the oven at 250 degrees instead of my typical 150, and it got so hot that I started actually like bending the plastic, as you can see there, and I still couldn't get it separated. So what I ended up doing is I just took the green wire from uh, this guy, and then I just hard connected it to uh, the main connector. So it's not going to the board or whatever it normally goes to in there. Maybe this is how it's supposed to go. I have no idea, but either way, um, it's connected here now. And now we just gotta feed this back through this hole, get it plugged in and hopefully it'll all work now. There we go. And there's one problem solved. So now our inner part of the tail light comes on and uh, she looks killer. So I do want to see if the reverse lights come on, if we put it in reverse, because I haven't tried those yet. So let's see what happens here. Okay, we got reverse lights. So that is uh, good to go. The brake lights I know work because I tried it before and this center light also comes on with the brake. So um, as far as the lights in the rear, I say we're good to go. I do still have to get the little side marker things wired up. As you can see, we, uh, we're just disconnected down here. So we just gotta get those wired and then I believe those uh, act as a turn signal or they might just, I have no idea, honestly. <laughs> so we'll have to figure that out before we wire it in. But um, I honestly was tempted to just leave them because I kind of like the look of it with them off. Just leave it all blacked out down there. I don't know yet. Mm -hmm. 
The next thing I want to get knocked out is getting the wing actually permanently mounted to the car. As you can see, there's still a, it's, it's only held on with one nut. So um, what we got to do is pull this off. We got to run some 3M tape around the bottom. That adds uh, kind of like a, a foam layer of protection between the trunk and the wing and also helps secure it to the trunk itself with the, I think there's one nut and two bolts or something like that on each side that also secure it. It's not just held on by tape. Um, so let's go ahead and get this thing pulled off and hopefully we didn't scratch the trunk much. I'm sure it probably did a little bit because it's plastic, hard plastic on the metal. But uh, yeah, let's get it ripped off. Just went ahead, scraped off all the old adhesive and got new adhesive on here. We just gotta pull off the red backing and this thing is ready to get dropped back on the car. So let's head back in the garage, get this thing on once and for all. And now the wing can be checked off the list. It's on there, nice and secure. Now we got our little caps back on. I did get two bolts in those holes as well. And uh, we're good to go. Rear end is pretty much wrapped up. Tail light's good, wing good. Only thing I got left is the side markers, but um, we can worry about that some other time. Now we gotta move on to where we left off last video. Right here in our fuel system area. Now I did just figure out the problem, I think. So, if you guys remember in the last video, when I turn the key, it should be getting signal to the relay from this blue signal wire telling the pump to kick on, but it's not. And it didn't take all that long to trace this wire back, come through here and realize that our blue wire was actually cut and there's a connector on it to go to how he used to have the pump ran. So that would be my guess. If we connect this to this blue wire, we're gonna have signal again and we'll be good to go. So let's go ahead and do that real quick and hopefully we'll be able to start the car without having to jump the pump. All right, don't mind the rain outside, but a few minutes later, I did go ahead, I wired the ground to a ground and the power to a red power and ran that to the relay. Now, like I said in the last video, I'm gonna clean this up once we get it working, but now that it is all connected, let's go ahead and try to start the car and see if that works. Um, I did or actually originally try to use the factory blue wire, but that did not work. So now I have it connected to the uh, bigger gauge that he had, and um, I'm hoping that's gonna work. I don't know what he has that ran to, but hopefully it's uh, the crank of the car. <laughs> hey, there we go. All right, so we got good oil pressure. Ah, uh, AFR, perfect. She'll work her way down. A oh. All right, well, that will work on. Probably doesn't help. We got a wide open intake. Um, but all right, cool. So now I'm just gonna go ahead, clean up all our wiring, make it look all pretty again, and then we can get it closed up and get the back seat in this thing. Bam, she's all pretty back here now. So let's get the rear seat in, and then we'll keep moving up. And if you look through the crack there, you can kind of see our next mission. So moving inside the car to the radio. I pulled this out the other day because I was trying to listen to music on this nice head unit and it wasn't turning on. Now, it is the next day now and I did figure out our issue. So it's luckily an easy fix. Now, as you can see, there are a lot of wires in here. Like this one, for example, that's not connected. So I am gonna take the time to just make sure everything is correct and pretty. There's a lot of weird stuff going on in here and you know, the nicer it is, the less of a fire hazard we got in this car. So uh, yeah, I'm just gonna take the time to do that. But the issue we had was we were getting constant power through um, that red wire right there. 
on the edge is our constant power line and then the ground's right above it. Now if we flip this to the other side, this yellow line right here is our uh, accessory. So the issue we were having was I was getting the constant power but when I was turning the key to accessory, this guy wasn't getting any power. So it wasn't turning on the key. Now I figured it would be the accessory fuse down in the fuse box down there, but turns out after reading the pin out that it's actually the power mirror fuse. So I went and checked that and sure enough there was not even a fuse in there for power mirrors and I would have never known because we don't have mirrors on the car right now. So um, got a fuse in there, 10 amp fuse, and now we have power to this guy. So let's get everything plugged back in and we'll see if it turns on. Moment of truth here. All right, buttons are lighting up. Hey, there we go. Okay. See if she boots up. There we go. Dang. We're very Android over here. Um, okay, cool. So I'm gonna get my phone connected to this thing and see if we play some music. All right, there is one song I can play because I have a license for it on YouTube. So uh, yeah, let's send it. Radio works, speakers work. Does it sound perfect? Nah, but also, I mean, the door's all torn apart, so maybe it'll sound better once we get it all cleaned up and there's nothing to rattle around. So now that that's done, I'm gonna get the rest of the interior slapped back together. And then I'll probably try to get this boost gauge to turn on because if you guys remember, um, she don't turn on. <laughs> so I'm gonna get that guy on. And then the interior is pretty much done. And then we can move up to the engine bay and fix some leaks. Interior is all put back together. So now what I wanna do is start this thing up and wait for it to start leaking. That way we can pinpoint exactly where it is or at least try to get some sort of area as to where we're leaking water from. I also went ahead, got the boost gauge rewired. So that should be all good. As you can see, we got power to it now. Let's go ahead, start this thing up, see what happens. Check engine light went out, that's pretty cool. Not really sure why the ABS and traction control lights are on, but maybe it has to do with the rest of the harness being unplugged up front. Not too sure. I was told by the previous owner that for whatever reason the fans aren't kicking on and he thinks that was part of the reason it blew up last time so I'm going to monitor those right now they are not on so I'm not really sure what the deal is but uh yeah definitely something to keep an eye on. So as far as what I can see from the bottom side it appears it's coming out of the coolant return from the turbo which I think is on the engine side of the turbo. So once it cools down, we'll have to pull the manifold off, pull off our upper intercooler piping and see if we can access it from there. I'm hoping it's just like a crush washer thing or the hose or honestly, I have no idea what it is, but it can't be that hard. It's literally just a, it's like a banjo to a hose and then to a banjo, I believe. Something like that. It just connects the turbo back to the block. I think uh, if I remember correctly, that's how it's set up. Now we do have a little oil leak too. I think it's either coming from the pan or I don't, honestly have no idea. I had the bowl under there catching it, but you can see there's a little puddle and then the water behind it that's leaking off the coolant return. So I got to figure that out. When I got back from Florida, it looked like it was transmission fluid, 
but now the transmission's dry and it's looking like the pan, so um, yeah, we'll figure it out. Here's our coolant return hose, just a little rubber hose. And as you can see, right there, that would be our source of our leak. So it's got a little crack in it. We're gonna go ahead and replace this guy. I'm gonna run to O'Reilly's real quick and hopefully they have a piece of heater hose this size. Well, I just hit all the parts stores around me and no one has heater hose that size. I think it's some specific thing for Mitsubishi. It's honestly smaller than I've seen before. Uh, they, you can, find fuel line that fit, but I'm not gonna run fuel line as a heater hose because I believe something in the coolant um, disintegrates fuel line, so you can't run it. Uh, I have half inch here, but that's too big and that's pretty much the smallest all the auto parts stores had. So I'm just gonna go ahead and order that exact hose from STM and uh, we'll get that here in a few days. But for now, I guess that's as far as we can get. Now, like I had mentioned, there is a slight oil leak and I believe it's coming through the pan. So I'm not gonna do it tonight, but we are gonna have to drop the pan and I'm either just gonna slap a new one on or I'm gonna run a different sealant. Now I ran ultra gray um, for the pan down there and I feel like I ran a fair bit of it. Now we did have to pull the pan like two or three times to fix some of our mistakes before starting this thing. But uh, I'm not really sure. I know my buddy Devin, you guys probably all know Devin, uh, he doesn't like to run ultra gray because he seems to have issues with it. And I never have until now. So maybe I'll just try running like a Honda bond or like, uh, the black on the oil pan. I used to run black on the oil pans and it was never an issue. So, um, I don't know. I'll order something up. We'll try just resealing it first. If that doesn't work, then I'll just order a new pan, but try to save money where we can. And if it's just the sealant or the RTV causing us issues, then why bother ordering a new pan? So um, we'll save that for another day. I'm gonna get a coolant hose on order and I guess I'll pick this video up when uh, when we get that here. A few days later now and we got a brand new hose from Mitsubishi. So let's go ahead and get this thing slapped in and then we can get our manifold back on, get it all back together and hopefully we're not leaking any water anymore. Everything on the car is now put back together. I even got our little filter in here. I know it's pretty uh, sauced, but clean it out and it'll do the trick for now. Um, I did go ahead and refill it with water and it doesn't appear that we have any leaks, but we're gonna start up the car and just double check. I know we still do have a little oil leak and I think it's coming from the pan, like I had mentioned, but we'll get to that later. As far as water, I think we're good. Let's go crank this thing up. Hopefully it still runs. check engine light and it's gone and so is the ABS and traction control so we just got airbag left and I know why that's on because it's not plugged in damn she sounds good Not seeing any leaks either, so. I let the car run for about 10 minutes and there's not really any big leaks, so that's good. Uh, the only issue I'm still seeing that we gotta work out is our radiator fans are not turning on. I did let it run for quite a while. I turned the heat on, turned everything on that I could to try to get them to start running or spinning. 
and they wouldn't spin. Uh, temp gauge gets like just below half, and then when I turned the heat on, it got to right about half. From what I've read on the forums, they should be on at that point. So I'm not really sure what the issue is. Could be coolant temp sensor, could be a wiring thing, could be the amount of coolant in the system, could be bad fans, could be a lot of different things. Fuses, relays. I did check the one uh, fan fuse. I think it's like a 40 amp fuse. It looks good. So I'm not really sure. <laughs> I'm not really sure what it is yet. I think that what I'm gonna start with is just putting direct power to the fans, making sure they actually work. Um, Cause if they don't work, then obviously it's probably just the fans themselves. Uh, but more than likely, my guess is that it's either the coolant temp sensor or a relay somewhere or a wiring issue. Um, that seems to be the trend with this car and that's what I'm guessing it's gonna be. So uh, other than that, all the bugs are pretty much worked out. We got the taillights working, got the radio working, got our coolant leak fixed, bays all back together. And yeah, all the miscellaneous stuff is coming to a close. And probably in the next video, we're gonna hit a first drive. So I uh, hope you guys are stoked. I'm stoked. I'll catch you in the next one. But until then, peace out. See y'all later.